Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael, and I'm now eight weeks into the build of Station Road in my model West Yorkshire town, set in 1993. The building at the bottom of the street is really starting to look like a real part of the town. There's still a long way to go, and in this episode I'll show how I progressed with the central tower, the pub's entrance, and these two interesting bay windows, one with a challenging curved part. After last week's base facade, Join me then for Complex Facade, Building Station Road, Part 8. So with the simple side done, it was time to make the next two parts. As we know, each of the three parts overlaps the one beside it, with the tower stepped back from the left and proud of the right. The shape of the tower part is narrower on the left where it is behind the left part of the building, but it's full width at the top where it breaks free of the roof. I end up with this hook-like thing to help me get it all aligned. It goes over the support wall from last week and against the skeleton supports from the week before that. Beside this we'll go another slice of wall to represent the outer edge of the tower. And then beside that we'll go the base layer of the pub's facade. With the pieces just resting in place, this is the first time that I see the stepped nature of the building and I can tell that it's going to work. So then, let's turn this hole into an open entrance to the pub. Rather than a closed door, and even though it's always only 20 to 12 in the morning in Chandwell, I wanted the pub's door to be open, showing an interesting entrance vestibule. I stuck some rectangular walls and a chequered floor to a bit of 1mm card. I stuck a couple of door frames and a door to some half mm card. I cut the door frame with its sub mm top frame and stuck it behind the tower's front, which had by now been covered in texture. The two walls and floor butt up against each other like this. I glue them into a U shape using PVA and then position the building's front on top. The back wall goes on top of that, keeping everything square. You'll see that I added the door in the open position just inside. I make the inner door in the same way as my windows. The shape of the door is printed onto sticky label, stuck to acetate, and then the glazed parts are peeled out. That goes on top of the frame. And then these black pieces of paper with the pub's name on are put behind the door. This hopefully makes it look like it's dark behind the glass but the name of the pub is etched into the glass. It's impossible to read, but I know it's there. With the other windows glazed, the tower, complete with its entrance, can slot into place on the main building. I apply PVA to the component and its supports, and then I carefully drop it into place. I clean up the errant PVA as I go. Another nice thing about PVA is that if you do get it somewhere you don't want it, it just wipes away without damaging the printed surface. Any slight sheen can be removed at the end with a coat of matte varnish. With the tower in place, I can now add the remaining facade. The bay windows on the Shipley prototype are interesting. The set on the left start at the tower and have this wonderful curved edge. The next ones along are a more typical design. I thought long and hard about these curves. Would I need a pencil? Some kind of tube? A drinking straw perhaps? I measured the curve I'd drawn. It's a quarter circle with a radius of 4.5 millimetres. Whatever I found would have to be the exact right size, and I'd need only a quarter of it. In the end, I opted for my usual method, just cut out some card and paper. So, we have 15 quarter circles with a 4.5 millimetre radius, five horizontal ribs, and a vertical spine. I used Inkscape to help me figure out the shape and size. There'd be a central spine, the full height of the bay, and that's shown in yellow. The 15 quarter circles will be distributed up the full height, shown in orange. The ribs, shown in blue, would give the bay its correct width, whilst avoiding the windows. The shape of the ground is shown with a green line. Looking at the plan view from the top down, the ribs would be 1.4mm shallower than the 4.5mm quarter circles to allow for the front face of the bay to fit on top, flush with the circles. So here is the spine with its guides, and the five ribs. I used simple dabs of PVA glue and arranged them freehand on my cutting mat. We don't need any right angle jigs here as the joins will be naturally bendy at this stage and they will move around a bit even after the glue is dry. Cutting the quarter circles with my scalpel from 1mm card was an exercise in care and patience but I was eventually left with 15 pieces, all of about the right size. Using a tiny amount of PVA and my tweezers I dropped these individually into place against the spine. I was eventually left with a frame of the right proportions for the bay. The frontage of the bay was made from two layers of half millimetre card in the way that I showed last week, and with a bit of glue it just dropped into place on top of the frame. Looking closely, it's by no means perfect, 
but everything generally lines up. And the curves are flush with the face at least. Before adding the texture, I used some stone coloured paint to fill in the incredibly thin stone mullions. There was no way I'd be able to wrap texture paper around these 1mm wide pieces of card. To get the texture the right size, I needed to measure the width all the way around the curve. Inkscape's measure path function helped here, and it turns out that it's exactly 31.92mm from A to B. So with the texture the right size and with the windows cut out, I glued it to the front face of the bay. Once it was smoothed into the right position, I had to contend with getting it wrapped around my curved ribs. I decided just to use my old faithful PVA for this. I added glue to each rib individually and then just massaged the paper into place around the curve. It took a while for the curve to take and the glue to hold. The end result is exactly what I wanted. The stonework curves like it does in Shipley and it all lines up with the texture of the base facade. The rightmost bay only protrudes from the main building by 2.46mm. There was no way I'd be able to make this from three separate rectangles of half millimetre card. I decided to make it from one piece of card with scored folds and a few little card supports. It's not my neatest piece of work, but you can see here how it works. The card is gently folded and three little stacks of card push the central section out by the exact right amount for the bay. The folds are not as crisp as I would have liked, but the overall shape is about right and I was happy enough with it. The tower and the bay windows took me eight and a half hours, which takes the overall time I've spent on Station Road so far to 46 hours. I used two A4 labels, one sheet of half millimetre card, two sheets of A4 photo paper and one scalpel blade. This takes the total cost of the street to £1.93. Today, the street looks different still. I'll be showing the back wall and the roof next week and talk a little bit about how to get all of the interesting angles exactly right. If you're enjoying my build of Station Road, please give this video a thumbs up using the button on YouTube. This helps others find my videos and it also makes me feel good as well. Here's a look at a video that YouTube has randomly chosen for you. Go and take a look if it's made a good choice. As ever, the silver button gives details of my channel membership, but until next week's roof and angles then, thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll see you then.